What's up guys, Max here and welcome back to my dungeon. Today I want to talk about overclocking, in the specific uh, extreme overclocking, how to bin, so how to choose to select the right CPU to compete in hardware bot uh, with uh, extreme low temperature, like liquid nitrogen temperature, and to find a good one is uh, not an easy task at all, since uh, a chip like this, uh, this is the Ryzen 9 5950X, so that is one of the best for some of the benchmarks that uh, we are using to compete, is pretty hard since uh, it had to meet uh, some criteria, so especially the resistance to extreme cold. When we go to full pot, to explain you, this is what they call the pot. So the LN2 container that uh, we go down to negative 192 degrees and this part that is in contact with the CPU will go extremely low, so negative 192, negative 190 and not all the chip can sustain that extreme environment. The chiplet of the Zen 3 and the Zen 2 are very sensitive uh, to extreme cold. In this case, uh, the chip that I have right now and that I want to change with this one, if it's a good one, have uh, an issue that if I go higher than 1400 MHz uh, in the fabric clock, the system just shut down. So if I dial, let's say, a good chip is like 1600 MHz for the FCLK or above, if I go that high with the frequency at around 130 degrees, minus of course, minus 130 degrees, the system just shut down. Since uh, uh, with extreme cold, uh, the propriety of the components change. So uh, something just stopped working and you're off your game. So in this case, I want to find a chip that can do at least 1600 MHz of uh, Infinity Fabric clock at full pot, so at negative 192 degrees. And that was only the first uh, trial that this CPU had to pass uh, in order to be selected, to be picked. Then we have also frequency, since if you want to reach the top 10 or even the first position, you need a CPU that is very lucky with the silicon and uh, you can push up to extreme high frequency. To give an example, now the chip that are in the first position can do 6 GHz for multi-threaded benchmark and uh, around 6.2 in single-threaded benchmark or light-threaded benchmark. So you don't need only a chip that is very resilient with extreme temperature, but you need a chip that is also lucky with uh, higher frequency. But now, let's put uh, all this theory into practice. The first test uh, that I'm going to do is with liquid cooling, my custom loop. Before uh, going with LN2 that is expensive, I would like to check if uh, my CPU have a chance uh, to be uh, the new best one or not. And uh, well, this is useful when you've been, uh, let's say, older chip, uh, when old school chip, because sometimes we do competition with really good, uh, really old hardware. So I go hunting on eBay and I can find like 10, 50, 20 CPU. And so the first uh, we have to test it on uh, liquid cooling since uh, it's not, is inexpensive. And if you have to test everything on LN2, is getting really expensive. So first of all, I want to try to see if this chip uh, is uh, for the frequency matter is better than the chip that I already have. And uh, well, if uh, I have a good margin, it's worth uh, to go LN2 and see if I can pass uh, the maximum temperature limit. Okay, as you have already seen, uh, I'm going to test with the Cinebench R15 with the load level calibration set uh, at uh, level three and uh, 1.25 volts on the CPU. So I'm going to check with this voltage the maximum frequency my chip can actually pass the test. Uh, this is uh, the limit of my current chip. So with the multiplier at uh, 46.25, so 4 gigahertz, uh, 625 megahertz. This is the maximum my actual chip can run. Let's see if uh, this is equal or better. This uh, with this type of uh, CPU is pretty uh, fast, since with 32 threads uh, I can really terminate uh, the test in seconds. So yes, uh, at least uh, I know that the chip that I'm testing right now is at least uh, equal in frequency and it's not a bad chip, uh, so if I can improve this margin I can probably have a chance uh, to place myself uh, in the top 10 or even in the podium. So let's uh, raise the frequency by 25 megahertz and run the test. 
so far he seems doing good so yes at this point okay we are already 25 megahertz more than my actual chip let's push a bit other 25 megahertz more since uh, well uh, the test with liquid uh, with liquid cooling uh, is something that uh, can give you a, well we passed the test can give you a degree uh, to understand what is going to happen when you go extreme cold but uh, you never know until you try since uh, every chip uh, reacts differently some chip uh, scale with cold some not so i can have a chip that is uh, very nice with liquid cooling but uh, so and so with liquid nitrogen but at least uh, <clears throat> i want to have an idea and to show you to compare compare uh, two of the same model to see to show you the difference even in liquid cooling so I'm going up again to 25 megahertz, so we are, run, we are running now at 4.7 gigahertz all core. So we're talking about uh, 16 core 32 threads, liquid cooling, and 1.25 volts. Okay, so we have uh, already 75 megahertz more than my previous chip. That was uh, a day one chip. So maybe doesn't say anything, but after a one month, uh, two months, uh, it seems that the newer chip are a bit better. So now 47.25, the multiplier. I run again this test. Finger crossed, as always. And no, the system crashed. But, uh, well, we have uh, 75 megahertz on liquid cooling. And it's not bad. Uh, maybe it can, it can translate uh, in like 100 or more megahertz uh, with liquid nitrogen or just the same or 25 we don't know but at least is something so i think that uh, this chip uh, can perform well uh, with liquid nitrogen but now we have one more test that uh, i want to do we use this chip for multi-threading application but also we use this chip to do some single threaded or light threaded application like uh, uh, 3d mark 05 or uh, super pi so now I'm going to enter the BIOS, disable one CCD, and check the maximum frequency I can reach with only one CCD and uh, SuperPi. So one, a single thread application. So my previous chip was like uh, 51.25 uh, with the multiplier. So let's see if we can reach uh, 5.2 at least uh, with uh, this new one. Okay, so now we have only eight core, eight threads enabled. And I'm going to run it at 5 gigahertz, uh, super pi, 1 million. So, well, I'm expecting to reach at least the level of my previous chip, since we have 75 megahertz more in the all-core manual OC. Let's go step up a bit of 50 megahertz. So 1.4 volts, LLC level 3. And, well, I'm... I would like to see 5.2 since uh, uh, sometimes uh, with uh, this dual CCD chip uh, you have uh, one very lucky uh, CCD and the other one is so and so or uh, similar. Uh, with my 3950X uh, I wasn't able to compete uh, since uh, one of my CCD was really bad. Uh, the first one was a very lucky one so I was able to get a really nice score in the single threaded uh, benchmarks but uh, my second CCD was really bad. I wasn't able to compete uh, with uh, the multi-threaded benchmark. Uh, I hope that this year uh, things can change a bit for the best. So, uh, the, apparently the, the benchmark crashed, so it's not a good sign. Uh, let's retry. So, 5 gigahertz and 50 megahertz. Now I'm going to raise it uh, a bit. One thing that I have to say is that uh, with the, this type of benchmark, usually uh, I have to go through all the cores and select uh, everyone individually because sometimes one core is luckier than another and sometimes one core is faster in frequency than another. So I have to pick also the fastest of the eight core that I have here. It's something that I obviously I won't do that in this video. This is just to show you more or less how is the binning procedure. But it's something that uh, I will have to do. So I have to check every single core, which is the fastest in terms of performance and the fastest in terms of frequency. So now we are 50.75. Uh, 
So almost 5.1 gigahertz. The benchmark seems fine. Okay, so 5.1 gigahertz. Again, this is a benchmark that is seven seconds, so it's easy to okay crash. Okay, we have uh, now we have uh, 50 megahertz less on the the first uh, CCD. That is not a good thing. Probably my second CCD is faster, but I can disable only the second one. So if my fastest CCD is the one that I had to disable, it's not good. So I had to run the benchmark with all the CCD and bring down the first, the, if I can, with, with the tools, I need to check. So I will have to enable everything, bring down the frequency of the first CCD, and uh, raise only the frequency of the second CCD. So it gets a bit messy, but, uh, well, if we have to set some score and my second CCD is the luckiest, we will have to do that. And now I have to complete uh, the last uh, trial, so the extreme cold uh, uh, test, but uh, since it is going to be fun, I'm going to do that uh, in a live stream that I'm going to do very soon. I have a, as well here a 3090 in Kingping, uh, so I can try to do some uh, uh, CPU and uh, GPU overclocking live and maybe if we are lucky enough we can set some nice score. Uh, so stay tuned for that uh, and uh, well Twitter or YouTube channel or my Discord I will uh, tell you when we can do that. I don't know if I have to recharge the liquid nitrogens since uh, I'm already testing the board. So I want to, to give you a nice show where we can break some GPU and CPU records, uh, maybe in a single session, but we'll see if we are lucky enough. So like and subscribe as always, and see you in the next one.